something instead of just playing with the Internet. They could be given, as I say, three months of basic training where they're told what their mission is and taught that they have a real job to do that's responsible and they're going to be required to perform, and they can't cop out based upon uh, their neurosis or fears or nervousness or they don't feel comfortable. It's simple. They're in the army now, and they better get used to it. I mean, you could make it like a gigantic Internet company in the military, give them free bottles of water uh, and give them a free whatever they want to eat, some tofu for lunch instead of meat. And believe me, you can make them very comfortable pretty fast. I'm not saying they're all going to perform to, to the level that we want them to perform, but they have to be taught that they A, they have to, and there are consequences if they don't, that they can't cry their way out or hire a lawyer to get their way out. They're not getting out of the military. They're in, and they're going to work for X number of years, and if they don't, there are consequences. They'll be put in prison. That's something that will motivate them pretty good to become real, real human beings instead of Internet babies. Thanks for the call, Michael. No, you have to get tough. We have to crack down. We need it. We need a selective service draft on people who are computer savvy. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Here's a little article for you from HotAir.com. While we fight over Trump, France closes three mosques, finds hundreds of weapons. The French have adopted what is clearly a no-nonsense attitude towards radical Islamist terrorism, and they're not taking their foot off the gas. As the United States continues to debate over tone and how to balance religious liberty and tolerance against domestic security, Francois Hollande's forces have cut a few corners on those subjects, and just began shutting down mosques. At least three of the Muslim houses of worship have been closed already, and law enforcement has found a trove of disturbing items among the hall. Guns, 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 guns. Tom Porter at the International Business Times reports that the guns included 7.62 millimeter ammo, uh, AK-47 rifles, terrorist propaganda videos, and they're just getting started in the mosques. That's what's going on in France. And what's going on here? Uh, you don't know what's going on here? Are you ready for the next one? You better hold on. Because here it comes. The snake in the White House has already admitted over 100,000 Syrians since 2012. You see, he's doing the shuck and jive on you telling you he's going to bring in 10,000 and we're literally arguing over whether we should or we shouldn't bring in mainly men of military age from Syria while well, the snake has already silently brought in a hundred thousand of them since 2012 how do I know this because it just came out today some hundred and two thousand three hundred and thirteen Syrians have been granted admission to the US as legal permanent residents or through programs including work, study, and tourist visas from 2012 through August of this year, according to information released just now by foxnews.com. Take that home and think about it. 102,000 of them have been let into this country on all kinds of visas and with green cards. Many of them are holding U.S. citizenship, and nobody has vetted them. And Jay Johnson still has his job. Has his job. Can you reasonably assume that amongst the hundred and two thousand of these people, some of them might be terrorists? Uh, you would say none. Would you say one? You'd say one is not possible. Two, ten. How many? You think any of them were vetted by Jay Johnson's group of clowns? I'm asking you. I'm asking you how much worse does it have to get until the people rise up and demand a change? WMAL, Jeremy, welcome to the program. You've got about two minutes. Fire away. Uh, hello. Uh, so I'm not in IT, but I dabble in the IT industry. I'm a private contractor working on many government agencies. Uh, what you're talking about, drafting people with IT backgrounds and stuff like that, is sort of already happening. Um, one project I was working on was getting hacked by China, and one of the guys that was assisting me 
Uh, it turns out that he was offered a plea deal. He was busted for espionage on an industrial scale, and his plea deal was to work for this certain agency to pretty much get off the charges. So he turned into a white hat. I, well, I understand that there's a movie out now called Black Hat about them going into one of the prisons and bringing out a guy who was busted for using computer technology to steal a lot of money on Wall Street, and he's given a plea deal. They'll let him out of jail if he works with a Chinese captain to, to break down a, a network that's uh, d doing these things like running up the price of, uh, I think it was soy or wheat, I don't know what, making money on that, closing things down like subways. I'm not talking about just doing that. I'm talking about actually drafting people who don't want to be drafted and forcing them to work in the military. What do you think about that idea? Uh, kind of. I also know of an Air Force program, because I've also worked with some of these guys, where they're plucking people out of high school that are testing higher on the ASVAB test that may want to go into a certain area, but they're pushing them to go into IT and pushing them on that side on the recruitment tools. Like, look, we can get you further. We can get you better education than what you oh, yeah, I understand, but you know that their mothers and fathers are going to say, don't be a redneck, don't go into the military, H hold out for a job in Facebook or Twitter. I'm talking about the rich kids who come from good families who are IT experts. I am saying draft them against their will. It's a matter of life and death. That's my opinion. A copy of Government Zero goes out to you as a Christmas present. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. So we're all talking about last night's debate, but I've gone way beyond it. I've, I've taken off from Trump saying, shut the Internet off in parts of the world, which he's 100% right about. And I said that we need to draft, selectively draft, computer-savvy young people, force them into the military to serve us, to take down websites, to expose uh, the individuals if possible. You see what I'm saying? What is wrong with that idea? Now, we have Alan on WJR calling. Alan, welcome to the program. You say that you're a hacker. Is that correct? Uh I used to do stuff like that, yes. And a hacker what, community is very unique. What is a hacker? What does a hacker do? The draft wouldn't work because you got what's called a... No, no, wait, wait. Let, before we go to the draft, Alan, what does a hacker do? you got two different types, basically. you got hard and soft. A soft hacker will go in and look at people's stuff but won't change anything. A hard hacker goes in and changes stuff and brings them down, as you say, and does stuff like that to the equipment or to the place or to the company or government or whatever. All right, so let's say they don't like Donald Trump. The hackers uh, shut down his website last week. That's what you mean, the dark hackers, right? That's a hard hacker, yes. All right, but, Alan, are most hackers left-wing fanatics? No, most hackers are just rebels. They just want to do hacking, and that's why... If you try to get them... Well, in no, this is very important. I got, no, I like this. It's like the Dirty Dozen with Lee Marvin. So, in other words, a lot of them are renegades and somewhat criminal in their mentality. And so if you drafted them, you're saying they're unmanageable is what you're implying. Is that, isn't that correct? No. You had an entry-level discharge, so they'll just become passive-aggressive. The way to do it would be to tell them, hey, we're going to hire you to be the hacker. We are going to pay you this much money, and we'll write you a paper saying you're free of all charges against you for hacking in these areas. But wait, that's if you catch them first. You'd have to first laboriously catch the hackers. We don't have time for that. We need a couple of hundred thousand computer geniuses drafted into the military. And I'll tell you where I'd start. I'd force Zuckerberg to give up a certain percentage of his workforce to the military effort. What would be wrong with that idea? They're not the hackers. Those are programmers. They're two different beasts. I, I understand that, but don't we need both? I want hackers. This is what I'm looking no, hold for. Hold on. Don't we need both? Don't we need hackers to break into the uh, the uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda websites or communications networks? And don't we need uh, computer programmers to put out positive propaganda for young people in this country? I think that Zuckerberg has to pay back to this nation instead of catering to China, and I think he needs to give up a good percentage of his workforce. And the same goes for Larry Ellison, and the same goes for Bill Gates. It's time for them to give back to this country. I don't have a problem with what you just said, but the thing about it is if you want hackers to bring down the bad companies, countries, excuse me, 
uh, Dan, what you need to do is put an ad out there saying, hackers looking for hire, and you will get hackers. You'll get all sorts in all levels. Well, let me explain. Here's how I would react. Listen, I'm a rebellious person. As, older, as old as I am, I'm a rebel. I've been a rebel all my life. I rebel against any authority. Ask anyone who knows me. Anyone who tells me what to do, I bristle and I go the other way. I've been a rebel since I was born. I'm very rebellious. I'll tell you how I would react to that. I wouldn't react to it in the way they think. I would not do it at all. I wouldn't do what they ask me to do. I do the opposite. They're not going to do it unless you force them to do it. You cannot appeal to a, a rebel to do the right thing. They're not going to do it. But a hacker, if you give him a challenge, I challenge you to break into China's Internet or Russia's Internet or somebody yeah, else. But they'll read, but they'll read right through it. They're smarter than the guy who's going to try to recruit them. They're going to look right through him and laugh at him. You know, I, I don't think it would work. I mean, from the other side, you say it wouldn't work for your uh, reasons, and I, I don't deny that you're right, but I would say that won't work for my reasons. Well, I got a lot of friends that still do it, and that's what they talk about. The only reason they won't try to do certain stuff is because they are afraid of the criminal charges that would come against them. Okay, now you're making a different point, and it's a very good one. You just made a very a completely salient point. You said that they'd be glad to break into ISIS. Uh, networks, but they're afraid that they would be arrested for doing so by this government, more or less. Isn't that what you said? Exactly. So they don't trust the government, nor do I. So how are you going to get hackers to trust this government when it's an untrust we and untrust the enterprise to begin with? Nobody trusts this government. We have the sneakiest president in the history of this country. Why would anyone trust them at all? Well, I don't, but. I don't either. If you did, if I don't. I don't either. I have nothing but contempt for them. Again. Okay, so wait, so my idea may not work. In other words, you draft people; they're not going to do it anyway. Is what you're saying? Right, but if you give them a motivation, the motivation they're always trying to find out who's the best. They're always trying to find out who can get who. So you take a set of really good hackers and you all put them in the and you put them in the same room, and you say, "This is our challenge today." And they're going to go against each other to try to see who can finish it first. I think that you ought to be drafted by the government to run the Hackers Bureau inside the U.S. military. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, least you, at least you have a sense of humor. I would probably get along with the hackers because we think the same way. Fundamentally, when you think about talk radio, if it's truly rebellious, it's actually kind of hacking the mentality of the country is what we're doing. <laughs> I go along with that. <laughs> I'm telling you, what we're, if we're good at talk radio, what we're doing is we're going up against the status quo and we're hacking the, the, um, the mainstream BS. We're saying, no, that's not what it is. We're going to take down that big lie and we're going to tell you what we think the truth is. I can guarantee you as I – not guarantee anything. I would suspect – I'll use a literary term or a term from the academic days. Uh, Savage would suspect that I have a large number of individuals in the hacking community who listen to this show because they think the same way. <laughs> All right, my friend, my hacking friend from uh, somewhereville, I'm sending you my book, Government Zero. Don't hack it. Whatever you do, don't hack it, my friends. <laughs> you know, I told you last night that that gentleman just called from WJR, one of my great affiliates in Detroit. And uh, I went to a show. I, I watched the debates for 20, 30 minutes. I had enough of the show. I mean, then I got the, the replay. That's why I can talk about it with all these great sound bites. And look how just one sound bite has set off such a good discussion. I mean, I don't need to review everything that was said. I took one great idea, which is Trump saying, close the Internet in parts, and, and, and Rand Paul attacking him for that. And look where we've gotten with his fabulous stuff so far. But I then went to a, a once-a-year party at a Ferrari dealership. I told you that. Because I love cars and I love exotic machinery. I always have since I'm a kid. I like motors and cars. And Make a long story short, they had some rare racing cars there. And we got one picture that's not that great of me in front of one of them on michaelsavage.com. I think it's a Formula One, isn't it, Ryan? A Formula One race car? I'm not sure what it is. Fa fantastic. Uh, the point is, is that do you know that in this little gathering of people in that little showroom, in that little dealership, I had listeners from a far, as far away as Detroit. They didn't come to see me because nobody knew I would be there. I wasn't a guest of honor. I just showed up. But I had so many fans in that room. And, you know, it leads to another train of thought, which it's, a, it's an area I'm a little reluctant to talk about, and that's about wealth and talk radio. Everyone in talk radio who is in the major leagues, the top five, is a wealthy person. 
they're lying to you if they pretend otherwise. They're not 